It's a great day, ladies and gentlemen, for me, uh, and I'd like to uh, greet all of you here, guests and directors of this great company. I'm very, very pleased to be here this afternoon. I took a special trip. You know, we have a long weekend and long holiday, and uh, I love holidays because I work two jobs, uh, one in the Senate and one where I'm not paid and the Red Cross. But these are heavy, heavy uh, workloads, and uh, we're always busy. Uh, there's a typhoon last night. Uh, there was a typhoon that, uh, or rather, a, a depression that created a lot of damage again in Locos Norte. We're still working in uh, in uh, Batanes uh, uh, during the last earthquake. We're providing water there. Hard to get there, by the way. Uh, we're doing work in Marawi, where you had a big fight there, uh, and uh, also uh, we're doing work in Dengue. We have. Uh, Tent that's set up in different hospitals in the country where we bring in people who are who overload the hospital or uh, the hospital can accommodate them all. So they have air conditioned tents and something that they don't have in the hospitals, but they also have uh, uh, mosquito nets to make sure that we don't transfer the virus to another patient. The reason I'm saying that is just I have to pay my way here. Uh, that's a commercial so that all of you. Uh, when you go out, please make sure that you look for the uh, me there and make sure that you write your check for the Red Cross. I would, I would appreciate that very much. No, what? No laughter? <laughs> you, a bunch of cheapskates here. <laughs> anyway, uh, what a great day for Subic Bay. You know, I was listening to Nando earlier and uh, brought back memories. Uh, uh, almost 20, uh, I suppose, 27 years ago. Uh, you know, I was in the Constitutional Convention, and I'm glad TJ mentioned that. But at that time, we were preparing for any sudden withdrawal by American troops here. You know, a lot of noisy leftists were saying, get the Americans out, and I say, I'm not worried about the Americans getting out, I'm worried about them suddenly going out in spite of you. And in fact, that's what happened, and uh, we had to prepare for that. And uh, one of the things we did was to make sure that we had uh, a plan just in case they withdrew and we created the free port of Subic Bay. This was later on copied by La Union, by Clarkfield, uh, whom I, uh, I had to amend the law from Clarkfield so they can continue being a free port and many other things. The reason why I say that is because uh, we inherited a tremendous infrastructure that had an airport and a seaport uh, and we wanted to go gangbusters. In fact, we did. Uh, the petroleum oil tanker, uh, oil, oil farm here, certainly enhanced the airport capability. We got FedEx. Boy, that was one of the happiest days of my life. I shed a tear when I got it, and I signed on the dotted line with Fred Smith in New York. And uh, we worked very, very hard to improve that runway. We had to slap one foot of concrete on top of the uh, old concrete of the U.S. Navy, and finally fix. Uh, you know, uh, water seepage at the airport uh, uh, under the runway, which the Navy could not fix for some reason. But we were finally able to fix it. And, uh, and pretty soon, we were able to fix that airport in 29 weeks. 29 weeks, uh, because FedEx had a deadline. And they had a computer that says, this was the most perfect place. You know, I was selling Subic everywhere. And in the world, uh, you know, I said the same thing Nando said. Uh, we're in the middle of Southeast Asia. 60% of the world is here. You know, we're three and a half hours away from China, Japan, Korea, and all the vibrant economies are here. Populated countries are here. India, Indonesia, this area. So what a perfect place. So there was really no reason, and I was never surprised that we went off like a rocket. The only enemy here is us. Jealousy, envy, maybe a little bit of corruption that uh, occurred uh, during my watch, but certainly uh, corruption exists everywhere else, and uh, that's not an excuse. When we got FedEx, uh, before we got FedEx, I remember a plane crashing in uh, the international airport in Manila, China Airlines. It blocked the, air, the whole airport. And I had Bill Patton, uh, at that time of Hong Kong, Governor Patton of Hong Kong here. And I had him at the officers club and he was having a nice visit, we were having a good time. 
And he said, hey, Dick, can you, uh, can you land 747s here? And I said, wow, I'm so lucky today. I was looking at the airfield, and there was a 747 landing. Yes, of course, right now you can take a look at the airfield. There's a 747 landing. And then there's another one. And then there's another one. We landed 14 747s that day. The airport was blocked off. And I can tell you, we were at the volunteers, and we all, I, I, I got everybody, all the volunteers, young and old, and even I was bringing down suitcases. I had to borrow uh, a special platform to bring down the belly of uh, the, the hold of a 747 from FedEx, it was already beginning to come in. <laughs> Although we have not yet uh, completed the airport in terms of uh, what we wanted it to be. So there was a baptism of fire, and certainly we also got all the equipment that was necessary. Uh, ASR-9 Raider, ILS, uh, later on we would have another platform, uh, the TLS system that was given by FedEx, and you know I had to go through a lot of flak because we had to cut trees on the other side so we could make it, you know, landing on both sides of the runway. So there's an awful lot of effort here, a lot of hardships. At the same time, when FedEx arrived, we also hosted uh, APEC. Can you imagine that? We were fixing up Subic. We had no money. Volunteers were working without pay. Two guys were running around refusing tips because we wanted to make sure we had a good name. And it was clean, you know, uh, everything was working well. And then on top of this, we were reading a big fish, FedEx, Coastal. You know, they took over the oil, the, the 29, uh, the uh, tank farm. And uh, we were also going to bid the seaport, which Ricky Rasson eventually got after a big fight between him and me. Now we're friends. But at that time, we were not very good friends. I don't mind saying that because that's the way things are. You know, you, you move on. And having said that today, uh, at that time we were also thinking of having, uh, you know, repair and run, you know, for small aircraft or even other aircraft. Painting of aircraft, refurbishing, a false tree. We were thinking of so many things and we were going. We got the Taiwan zone very quickly. I was there this morning reminiscing with Ted Wong, who is the chairman of TICO, and he remembered it when I, when I got uh, uh, a shellacking from the Department of Foreign Affairs. A friendly shellacking, because when after we inaugurated the Taiwan park, I was called to Malacanang, and uh, Secretary Romulo said, you know, uh, uh, Chairman, he said, uh, the President told me to uh, reprimand you. I said, why? And I said, uh, you play the national anthem of Taiwan, and you know we have no relations with Taiwan. Well, I, I didn't know that was the national anthem of Taiwan. I thought that was the national, uh, that was the number one hit uh, song in Taiwan. Everybody was singing, you know. And I said, uh, and you put up the flag. Oh, well, I thought that was the company flag. You know, and what's the matter with you guys? So, you know, you know, you know, you have a good one. And we all laughed, and of course he said, I reprimand you, I reprimand you, I reprimand you. That was it. We had great times here. FedEx had great times here. When the pilots moved out of here, they were crying. They loved suing. Like many others, when the Navy pulled out here, I saw admirals crying. You know, because this was a Disneyland to them. After going to Vietnam, going on bombing runs, they would come back here and, you know, blow a big, wow, I'm still alive. And they had a lot of fun here. Sometimes not too very, very nice fun. Uh, but uh, we made sure it, uh, we we made sure that uh, Subic and Alongabo went on. When I became senator again this time, I saw that the airport was not operating after FedEx left. We already had several flights here from Taiwan, from Hong Kong, and from Malaysia, and it's all gone. And everybody is talking about Clark being the main airport. I saved Clark. Can you imagine that they lost their duty-free status, and everybody is starting to leave? And I filed the bill on Clark, and they got saved. They never forget that until now. And uh, now they're saying, oh, the airport in Clark's gonna have all the, my they even changed, uh, you know, we were the second, you know, the alternate airport of the Philippines. Any plane that's in trouble would land in Sudan at the time. And uh, after FedEx left, and after I was unceremoniously removed, then you know, I've been removed twice. 
I'm pretty hard-headed and stubborn and I stand uh, uh, my ground on anybody in this country when I think that we're right. And uh, what broke my heart was that uh, FedEx left. And when FedEx left, I'll show you the good nature that I have here. I even came here to see them off. There was a chairman here. He wasn't even at the airport. Just to tell them, hey, thanks for the good times. And, uh, you know, uh, point that I'm trying to raise here is that you're never going to find a place that is so nice to work in. The ambiance is great. You have the forest in the background. You have uh, the, the ocean. You have great people. Peace and order is fantastic. And people are gone home. So when uh, aviation concepts start operating, and I think they'll be operating soon, it is my hope that if we niche before as Asia Air One, of FedEx, which really brought in cargo from all over the world, transferred it. We were going to be the logistics hub. We were going to use our warehouses so that people don't have to, uh, you know, they'll just pull out from the bodega or the warehouse and say, I need uh, 30 pieces of this spare part in Arizona, and we'll just pull them out and it will be brought there the next day. So today, as you, uh, as we move on and uh, launch this wonderful concept, uh, let me assure you, and I, I was pretty, pretty uh, upset because it's been three years when I got the money to, uh, for the equipment needed for the airport. And uh, I've been very, very dissatisfied, and I'm trying to be nice to Ami Aisma. Uh, you know, before Nando and Ricky got this, uh, uh, and Dika Boitis was telling me, oh, we're having problems here, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, don't worry, we'll fix it, then we got it fixed. Ricky finally got it, and now the airport's still not ready. So I hope that uh, if you hear some, you know, histronics at the uh, at the uh, at the Senate in the next few days, that would be me, because I would like to see Subic move on, not for the sake of aviation concepts alone, but because the country needs it. Need a big boost. We did this. Uh, gave our lives practically. I don't have a business in Subic except a home. I never, I, 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 led, I led by example. And many of the people who made money here, some of them friends, some of them took advantage of all the benefits that we put in here, they're doing very well. But you see, nobody's gonna take Subic philosophy, Subic sacrifices from us because we're going to make sure that the airport is finally working again and make sure that uh, we're going to have jobs for our people. That's the bottom line. Jobs and opportunity. You're going to have jobs with the technicians operating your fantastic uh, world-class Gulfstream jets. I was able to ride one with Oscar Wyatt, who operated uh, uh, the uh, coastal petroleum for a while, as uh, certainly the creme de la creme of all, uh, uh, you know, uh, executive uh, airplanes. And certainly, uh, I'm looking at the whole of Asia, you know, where a lot of billionaires are, and they have their own private planes to start using this airport, uh, you know, park their planes here. And by the way, uh, John reminded me that there are no penalties here in terms of uh, slots. Uh, you can fly anytime here without having to wait. You can land anytime here without having to wait, like they do in Manila. You can apply at lunchtime because that's the time the morning flights are coming back, or even at the nighttime, you'll be circling around. I don't know for the life of me why we cannot make our airports run. And let me tell you, the best is yet to come. I authored a bill uh, last uh, year. It got approved on both houses. But again, you know, uh, enthusiasm, the enemy is always those who try to say, no, we don't want it, you're going to affect my business, etc., etc. They vetoed it, and that would have been, that would have opened the whole Region 3 with all its infrastructure of highways. You know, uh, the uh, Tarlac, the uh, SETEX, the North Expressway, the Olongo Pogapan Highway, and now the train. We're gonna, soon going to have a train here next year. They're going to be building the train from Subic, uh, from Clark to Subic, so that uh, our CTSI will be doing uh, great business here. 
and of course the, the, the train from Manila to uh, Clark will be uh, built as well. So what we need to do is get more investments here uh, in, the, in the areas in central Luzon, get agricultural uh, going by way of an agricultural economic zone. The trick is to convince the people to see what they cannot see. And they, that is what vision is all about. Vision is a mental picture of uh, something that is important and necessary, must be done, uh, and uh, the guys who have it, they're the ones who see it, and they have to convince the rest of the world to see it that way. And uh, that is the story of Subic. The vision of Subic will not be stopped, and thanks to guys like Ricky and Nando and all the others who are here, uh, they keep the fires burning insofar as uh, what we intend to do here in Subic Bay. Certainly, uh, you'll get all the support from me, uh, Nando. Uh, your company will get all the support from me. And I'm glad I came here. Precisely, I came down here today, in spite of the holidays, uh, uh, to see two uh, you know, projects that we did early on. And that is the Taiwan Zone and the airfield. Now we're going to put the airfield to use. Hopefully, it can soon expand. You have everything that you need here. Uh, you can bring in your uh, equipment tax-free. You can bring in your parts tax-free. You have good uh, folks here. I hope you'll train a lot of the Filipinos here to, uh, uh, to, to work uh, Gulf Stream jets and all that. And uh, certainly, we hope that uh, uh, anybody who does business here will be happy. And will say that I want to do business in the Philippines. And we are the face of the country. That's what I always say. Even when I was mayor, the Americans were here and said, you are the face of the country. I want those guys from Iowa who never saw an, uh, an ocean who's coming here for the first time not to get a bad notion about Filipinos. Make sure that they have uh, a great uh, you know, experience, not just the bars and nightclubs, but the kind of people that we all are. So I would like to thank uh, Ricky for, uh, please send the next chance to Ricky. I will call him tomorrow uh, if he's here. Uh, and I'd like to thank all of you for putting the trust in Subic Bay. And certainly, uh, uh, from uh, the standpoint of a senator representing this region, I'll certainly do my best to make sure that I help the board. And you've got some very good people in the board here who can now help us uh, make sure that this becomes a reality. You have not told me when you want to start. So I suppose it will start when we get the go signal for all the avionics. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, you know, you don't really need a wish. You can fly VFR here anyway. Uh, so, uh, but of course, it's always good to have all this. Uh, this one. Sorry? That, that flew VFR. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, thank you all. Uh, I congratulate uh, the company. And certainly, you have my complete support and my attention. And I will be looking at this. If there's any problem that you have from the board or from. Uh, uh, the company, I'll be sure to make sure that we, we get our voices heard. It's budget time now, so everybody's going to be nice to me. <laughs> and so, so I still have the committee on Blue Ribbon, so that's enough to put the bijabers in them. You know, when you start, uh, I don't know if you've seen me when we investigate uh, uh, Cooks and Government. You know, the guy in the National Penitentiary had a crash course on being jailed in the city jail of Pasay for four months when he misbehaved in my committee. Did you know that? Uh, <laughs> and now he's there. You know, the president is a very kind man. I don't know why he does it, but he's very kind. That's all I can say. Thank you all very much, and have uh, the rest of uh, the week, and uh, very productive. Thank you.